Hello, my dear coffee with Brenna friends. It's a tea kind of day. Do you like my mug? It says Brockton Assembly of God. That's where I go to church. Clearly, I'm not in my house right now. Um, I do not have stained glass windows in my house. I'm in my church. And as soon as I began to try and record this video, um, I'm recording it the day before I post it, the, the bells struck noon and played some beautiful songs. So uh, I was half tempted to try and record a little bit of it for you guys. Uh, we, we, we attend church in a very traditional church building. I have a I think that the building itself is actually older than the Assemblies of God. So it was um, a Baptist church prior to us being here. But i um, happy to be here with you today. If you want to open your Bibles and grab your beverage, pause. Pause to do that. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 13 today. I know I told you we are still, I'm still going to talk to you about hearing God's voice. The week kind of exploded on me. We had a bunch of stuff happen. And I... No, when I talk about that, I'm going to be long-winded. And so I need to at least have a thorough outline for you guys so you're not sitting here for half an hour listening to me talk about that because I'm very passionate about that. Today, instead, we're going to talk about Psalm 13, and it's called Think or Trust. Think or Trust. Now, I've had no less than four conversations in the past week with people who identify themselves as overthinkers. And I would identify myself as a recovering overthinker. I have created this club in my head for those of us, Overthinkers Anonymous. And I'm not at all minimizing 12-step programs. I, you know I've talked about them before. I've been involved in them before um, for various reasons. So I don't use that term flippantly in any way. But overthinking can be just very life-consuming, and it's something that God doesn't want us to struggle with. He doesn't want us to get stuck there. So this psalm, I had been having these conversations, and I finished up reading about the miracles of Jesus and went to read the psalms. Just thought that would be a, um, I was just reminded of the richness of them when I looked up some verses. And uh some days I read a few psalms, some days I read one, and a couple of days ago I read Psalm 13. So if you want to flip to Psalm 13, if you haven't already, I'm reading the new NIV, I think 2011. It's a psalm of David, who apparently was in our Overthinkers Anonymous club here. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? So, David was wrestling with his thoughts. He was wrestling so much that it put sorrow in his heart. He continues on. Look on me and answer, Lord, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemies will say, I have overcome him. Sorry, enemy singular. Will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. So he's crying out to God. God, when are you going to help me with this? When are you going to look on me and answer? When are you going to give light to my eyes? That's such an interesting um, phrase, and we will come back to that. Because David continues on with, but. I love the buts of scripture. <laughs> David is telling you the truth about how he feels. There's a little insert in my in my quest bible that i'm reading and it says why were david's emotions so erratic <laughs> and it gives several reasons that could be you'll have to get your own quest bible i guess to read them thoroughly we don't have time to read the whole paragraph but it does seem sometimes like his emotions were all over the place hmm that reminds me of someone me <laughs> so he goes on to say but but despite how i feel Lord, I feel forgotten. I feel overwhelmed by my thoughts. And what I see, because he's asking for light to his eyes, I will trust, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. He has been good to me. Has he been good to you? 
Does your soul need to be reminded of that today? Does your brain need to be reminded of that? Think or trust. This is what we're talking about today. Those of us who are an Overthinkers Anonymous, and even those of you who maybe, ah, uh, I struggle with this occasionally, but I wouldn't put myself in that category, can see the danger of just getting stuck in our brains. We're, we're looking, those of us who are overthinkers, think through every situation. We wrestle with our thoughts about it. We think of every possible scenario. Those of us who are overthinkers, sometimes it keeps us up at night. We're so anxious about something we said or something we might say. Now, in my book, Freedom Step 4 of this book, this journey in five steps, learning to walk in freedom, is think like a free person. This is something I have wrestled with. I still struggle. I'd say 10% maybe of where I was um, compared to where I was. And if you um, want to pick up a copy of the book, I, I'll put the links in the um, show notes. And anyone who cannot afford it for one reason or another, just send me a message and I will send you a PDF for free, no problem. It goes through the journey of trying to um, identify the lies that I wrestled with and learning to replace them with truth. And this is what David does in this six verse psalm. He starts off by saying, oh, there's bells. He starts off by saying, how long am I going to wrestle with my thoughts? Because day after day, wrestling with these thoughts is giving me sorrow in my heart. God, instead of that, can you give light to my eyes that I might see things as you see them instead of getting stuck in here? Bottom line for him, verse 5. But despite this, God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to proactively choose to trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices that you're going to save me. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I mean, I'm going to sing praise. You know, these psalms were meant to be sung. It says, for the director of music, okay? I'm going to sing praise for he has been so good to me. I talk a lot about choosing to trust, making that active choice that despite how we feel sometimes, despite overthinking, that we're going to choose to trust in God, who he is, and all he has for us. We're keeping this short today. Really, you, you can even read on my blog some of the posts these are the old versions, and these have been updated in the book, but of how to think like a free person. And I have entire talks about it. It's that important. So let's pray, guys. Let's pray that instead of wrestling with our thoughts, that we will trust in his unfailing love. Lord God, we will sing your praise because you have been so good to us. Help us to choose to trust in your unfailing love, Lord God. Help us to choose to trust in your goodness, in your faithfulness, in your salvation, rather than trusting in our thought processes. God, as an old friend used to say, God gives you grace for your reality, not your imagination. Whatever we have to face, Lord, you will empower us to go through it, but you won't empower us to, to handle fictitious situations that may or may not ever occur. Instead, Lord, we can trust in your unfailing love. You are a bulwark of faithfulness, Lord God. Thank you for loving us first so that we can love it all. Thank you for calling us by name so we know we belong to you and that we don't have to get stuck in this place of overthinking. We love you so much, Lord God. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty, powerful, loving name. Amen. And if you have anything you would like for me to talk about in the future, um, let me know. Put a comment. Tell me something that struck you about this video today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Coffee with Brenna friends. Bye-bye.